Hello everybody, it's Sally Cathcart here from the Curious Piano Teachers and welcome to another Tuesday Teaching Tips. Now today I really want to uh, make you aware that it is Dyslexia Awareness Week. Lots of awareness going on here today and um, I think it's good for us all to know about dyslexia and because at some point in your teaching you are going to have a student who turns up who is dyslexic. So where you might say, where can I go and get some information? Well, a really, really fabulous source is the British Dyslexia Association. And they have a whole page all about teaching music to students with dyslexia. And I really, really recommend that you go and have a look at that. I'll put the link in the post straight after I finished below. And um, the page is absolutely cram packed full of really useful information. There is, for example, a PDF of top 10 tips that you can download and you can just read it through. And it, it will help you feel more confident and it will help you certainly in how you teach your students who, who might have dyslexia or dyspraxia or something like that. Um, so just on the back of that, I'd also, and, and I just did want to say an enormous thank you actually to the British Dyslexia Association for making all that information available because um, it, it is fabulous what is there and it's all absolutely free. So enormous thanks to you. And I also wanted to say a big thank you to one of our community members, um, somebody called Genevieve, a piano teacher called Genevieve. Now, Genevieve set us all a challenge last week because she said, OK, conquer season. How are you going to use your conkers? And um, I was a bit frustrated last week because I couldn't find any conkers, but I was out on Sunday and there there it was, a big horse chestnut tree and the conkers falling and hitting you on the head almost. But conkers, they're most brilliant things aren't they and I love them at this time of year for teaching rhythm and this is really good for students beginner students who might have some dyslexia or dyspraxia and it's just a creative way of teaching which of course is what we should be doing with all our students so for example I would use these to uh, work out rhythm patterns and here you can see something I made earlier here you can see I've got uh, my floor spots which you all know that I love quite a lot. And these are representing the beats. So we might have um, a song called Autumn Leaves. Aut <coughs> bit croaky. Autumn leaves, autumn leaves. So there's our four beats. So I might get my student to feel the beat as we sing the song. Off we go. Autumn leaves, autumn leaves. I should have really warmed up my voice. <coughs> so having done that and felt the beat, realised there's four of them here, I might then say, now what about the rhythm pattern of the words? And how many sounds are there? Autumn leaves, autumn leaves. Being that deliberate in my clapping. Autumn leaves, autumn leaves. Now I was doing this last week at one of the schools um, I was visiting and as the teacher said to me afterwards, she said, oh, you could see the light bulbs go on for the children because you were making it visual. You've got to remember that music is a very oral, um, oral thing and it exists in space. And for us musicians, we're used to it. We have structures in our head that allow us to understand. Children, non-musicians don't always have those structures. So making it visual sometimes is really useful. And hopefully they would go autumn leaves so this one has two sounds so we take two conkers and we put the student puts two conkers there and then one conker here like that and then we might do it for the next one or turn and they would do exactly the same there and there we have immediately a lovely visual representation of rhythm autumn leaves autumn leaves which can lead into then rhythm language whether you use t t ta t t ta or running walk running walk yeah it doesn't really matter whatever rhythm language you use and then of course that leads you into rhythm notation 
if that's the particular moment that you want to be but they can see clearly that there are two sounds and one beat so two top tips for today gosh um one is about the british dyslexia association and their fantastic resources that they have over on their website and the second thing is to use things like conkers to help our students of all sorts to see the rhythm patterns that they have a visual as well as an oral aid and of course conkers give you that lovely creative fun element to what you're doing well i've got to go and get ready for my teaching i hope you have thank you so much for watching i'm just going to see who's there we have a few people hi catherine catherine's there hi catherine and sharon as well so thank you both and grace as well thank you so much for popping along have a great afternoon wherever you are in the world or morning or whatever it is Happy teaching. Bye for now.